everybody. I'm M. Darcy. I use she and they pronouns. And I am very privileged to be the director of low code technology at a large Microsoft partner. Today, I'm going to be walking you through how to create a fully functioning chatbot with, un with under 10 minutes. And we're going to be leveraging Copilot Studio for this today, all using low code and also leveraging all the really cool AI features that are available as well. So let's just jump right in. First thing you're going to do is come to the Copilot Studio window and create a chatbot. Now you can do that either through make.powerapps.com, which most people are familiar with, or leveraging the URL in the top window. On the left-hand side, you'll click the Create button and follow the prompts to create your chatbot. In the interest of time, I've gone ahead and created one for us already, so we can just jump into building. First thing I'm going to do is change the authentication for this chatbot. Now, our scenario is this is a support chatbot that will be available externally for people that really like to play video games like myself. So we'll go over here to the Settings option in the top right corner. And then on the left-hand side, under the menu, you'll find security. And we're going to select the authentication option. Now, by default, Microsoft had this selected to authenticate. We need to go ahead and turn that off and click the Save button. It will pop up and tell you there's a couple of things that are going to change if you do make this to be available publicly. And we're going to click Save to accept that. Once that is saved, we're going to click the Close button. Next thing we're going to do is close out of our settings, scroll down to knowledge, and we're going to actually add in a couple of resources for Gen AI to leverage. If I click on the Add Knowledge button, you'll see there are a couple of options available for us. I've already gone ahead and uploaded a file which will be publicly available for the chatbot to go through. It is important to note that sometimes files take a little bit of time to actually index, so I've done that already in the interest of time. I'm going to now add a public website, and we're going to use the xbox.com website as a resource for our chatbot. It'll show us the link. You can rename it if you want, and the description is in here as well. I'm going to click the Add button to add that knowledge source to our chatbot. Once that's done, we're going to now start to modify some of the topics and change how the chatbot reacts to our generative AI questions. So on the top, you select Topics and Conversation Boosting. Conversational boosting is the topic that is used by the chatbot to leverage generative AI. So you can see this Create Generative Answers Topic option right here. If I click on these three dots, and then click on Properties, it's going to allow me to modify how this chatbot interacts with our users. So to make this a little bit fun, I'm going to ask the chatbot in natural language to summarize every single one of its responses in 40 words or less. I'm also going to ask it to speak like a pirate, just to show you the type of capabilities we had. I'll go ahead and click on the Save button. Always save with your topics. And I'm going to make a couple of modifications to this particular topic. Right now, it will just end current topic. But for the interests of this demo, I'm going to have it end the conversation. Once that's done, I'll click on the Save button. And now I'm going to modify how this topic works. So we'll click on the topic. So once we're done with this, we're going to modify the topic. So I come back into our topics, go to system, and I have that end of conversation option right here. So I'm going to open up the end of conversation topic. And you can see what this does is when the conversation is over, it's going to ask, ask the end user, did I answer your question? Yes or no. And if the answer is yes, it will take us through a nice C step. If the answer is no, it will actually ask us, do we want to escalate or do we want to do anything else with this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the escalate topic. So with this particular demo, I'm not going to redirect to a live agent, and that's certainly is something you can do. Instead, I'm going to have it fill out a form and create a customer service case. 
So I'm going to remove this particular message. And just to make things interesting, we're gonna ask with an adaptive card. So when I click on these three dots right here and go to properties, it's going to open up this tab right here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste some existing schema that I've written previously, just so we have something to look at and click on the save button. Great. Now at Sage, you'll get a really nice preview as to what our adaptive card is going to look like. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. You'll also notice it's added in a couple of these outputs for us too, which we're going to leverage in a Power Automate flow. So once that's done, I'm gonna click on the add note. And now I'm going to ask it to call an action. So this is one of the really cool things that, Power, that Copilot Studio can do. Click on send customer service email. So I've actually done some modifications on this. I'm going to switch to the tab where we can see the actual flow itself. And it's really, really basic. When Copilot Studio calls a flow, it's asking for these inputs, full name, email, and what the issue is. It's going to send an email with those details to myself. <laughs> And then it's going to return a message saying we've received your request or we'll respond in two days. Very, very basic. So I pop back to my Copilot Studio. I'm just going to populate in those different topic or those different variables. We're going to grab the email and we're finally going to grab what the issue is as well. And it's giving us a nice output. All I want to do is display that output to the end user. So I'm going to send a message. And I'm going to select the variable of response. Perfect. Now what we'll do is we will end the conversation. <laughs> topic management and conversation. Perfect. So now that topic is all done. A couple of final things before we actually get to test this out. What we'll do is we'll also modify the greeting that the chatbot can give to the user. So if I come back to my topics, click on system, and there is a conversation start option as well. In here, this is the message that is displayed anytime a person initiates with the chatbot. And there's a couple of things that we can do here. We've already got one default variable, which on the right-hand side, you can see what that looks like. I'm gonna add a second version of this greeting as well. So I'm just going to say I'm the Xbox support AI chatbot and I'll do my best to help. So we'll add message variation, great, and click on the save option. Last but not least, if I pop back over to my overview, before I publish that my chatbot, I want to change the icon so that it's more user-friendly. If I click on change icon, click on the controller icon and click save, it's now going to modify the icon that my chatbot leverages. Great, we are good to go. So I'm going to finally hit the publish option and that's going to publish this chatbot out across any different channels that I have. So let's take a look at what those channels are. In the top menu, if I click on channels, this is gonna show me everything that is available to me. And I can see it just published that out. I have the demo website, which is a really cool already spun up website that's going to allow you to automatically show off what your chatbot can do. To make this interesting, I'm gonna change out the conversation starters and click on the save option. Once that's done, I'll click on copy for the URL and let's load up our chatbot. Now you can see it's pulled in my conversation starters here on the left hand side. I'm going to start by telling it my Xbox will turn on and it's leveraging Gen AI in that topic that we just looked at to have a look at what way we can help modify or what way we can address our support issues. So we can see it's spoken to us like a, like a pirate and it's told us exactly how to solve our problem with our Xbox. Secondly, if I ask it how to kill a death clock, it's gonna have a look at the, the file topic that I added to the actual chatbot as well. So we can see here that it's able to leverage both the public website and the file to bring back answers to us. And it's also been able to tell us exactly where it found it. 
let's say none of these are working for me and I want to speak to an agent. I can pull up the Escalate topic by pulling up, by asking it to speak to an agent. And in here, I can provide my details. And we can add the issue in here. Once I hit on the submit button, it's sending off that flow and it's saying we will respond to you within two business days. And I will also receive an email with that information that will then kick off a customer service case request. So that is how we can create a fully functioning support chatbot in under 10 minutes, leveraging low code, Gen AI, all using Copilot Studio. 